observability is a mess with too many moving pieces. Fortunately, Open Telemetry is here to help with at least one of the many issues we have with observability today. So let's dig into it. Let's figure out what is Open Telemetry and why you maybe should use it. Okay, here it goes. We have a system, typically a cluster, but it could be a collection of servers that is not... Anyways, it's a system with applications running inside that system, and we have the need to monitor the behavior of such a system and everything in it. That means that most of the time we need to run multiple tools to collect and retrieve information we need. We need tools to store logs, to store metrics, and traces. We need to visualize the data in a way that makes sense. We need to set up alerts that will notify the system, and I repeat the system, so that it can auto-correct itself. We also need alerts that will notify us in cases when the system cannot auto-correct itself. We need agents or exporters that collect and send data to those stores. Those agents or exporters might collect data from the operating system or from the applications. Finally, and more importantly, we need to instrument our code so that we can collect the data we need. While all the other issues and tasks are important, without a doubt, and have to be done, instrumentation is the part that requires the biggest investment. If we make a wrong choice with tooling, we can relatively easily change it. We can switch from Prometheus to Victoria Metrics when we discover that the former does not scale well. We can change logging destination from Elasticsearch to Loki. Those types of changes do require investment in time and effort, but that investment is almost negligible compared to the investment required to rewrite instrumentation of our code. That is why it's important to make the right choice before we start instrumenting our code. And that's where open telemetry comes in, swoops in. It is an attempt to solve the instrumentation problem. But before we continue talking about open telemetry, let's talk about instrumentation in general. Here's a question for you. How do you know if your application is healthy and performing as expected? Some will answer by saying that we need to monitor metrics like memory and CPU usage of the application, that we need to ensure that the disk it's using to store its state is not full, that it responds to requests in a timely manner, that it does not crash, and so on and so forth. Those are external metrics and they are extremely important. However, they often serve as indicators that something is wrong without telling us what exactly is causing an issue. Let's take a short break because I need to tell you about something very different, yet the same. Telemetry can be complicated in multi-cluster environments and that's where Robusta comes in. It gives us a single pane of glass for multi-cluster observability. It enables us to pool and visualize telemetry data from tens or hundreds of different clusters. Now, apart from being a great tool, Robusta is also the sponsor of this video. So please go and check it out. The link is in the description. Now let's get back to the main subject. Then there are logs. They are great, fantastic for debugging, but they lack the significance that structured metrics provide. Their advantage is that they provide insights into applications themselves. Nevertheless, they cannot replace metrics, at least not in an efficient way. Logs will not give us insights into performance of a function or any other specific part of our applications. Or to be more precise, we can write metrics into logs but we cannot search, query, and aggregate those same metrics. So don't do that. Please, please, please do not write metrics as logs. Finally, we have traces. Traces give us the ability to monitor and troubleshoot transactions in distributed systems. Actually, 
that can be used in any type of systems, but when applied to distributed systems, we get additional benefits. Of the three types of data, metrics, logs, and traces, traces might be the least utilized, but potentially the most important type of data we might need to collect to analyze when things go wrong. We turn to traces after we discover that we have an issue. We turn to traces to find out what is causing a problem. Now, you might be asking, why am I saying all that? To answer the question, what is the issue of the problem, we often need to look inside into the behavior of a specific part of an application. Looking at application as a whole does not cut it. I need to know which part of the application is misbehaving. So let's say that we discover that we have an application that is slow to respond. We could have discovered that by monitoring response times of the application itself through metrics stored in, let's say, Prometheus. Fantastic! We know that the application is slow. Is that enough information to fix the problem? Well, probably not. We still do not know which part of the application is slow, which function or a class or whatever it's called in your programming language is causing the problem. Where should we look for the cause of the issue? If we instrumented the application, we would have metrics and traces and logs. As a matter of fact, you probably already have logs, but they would likely not provide a clue as to what is the cause of the issue. If it was an error, logs would probably caught that. But it's not an error. The app is slow, and we need to figure out which function, which part of the cause is causing the issue, the problem. So, what is instrumentation? Well, instrumentation is code's ability to emit something, to emit logs, to emit metrics, to emit traces. By instrumenting the code, we can add, we can inject information specific, not to the application as a whole, but to the specific part of that code, that application. We can follow the execution of a specific function through traces, or we can, for example, measure the number of concurrent executions of a specific function through metrics. You're most likely already familiar with instrumentation with logs. After all, almost everyone adds logging to their code. That is something we've been doing for from the beginning of the short history of computing, from the beginning of time. What is less common is to instrument code with metrics and traces. Today, the question is not whether we should instrument code with logs, metrics, and traces, but rather which tool, or to be more precise, which library and which standard to use. Typically, we choose an instrumentation library specific to the store where we collect metrics or traces. So, for example, if you are using, let's say, Datadog, we would instrument our code with Datadog's library. Nevertheless, that's risky. And I'm being polite, because it's much worse than being risky, but I'm trying not to swear. That ties us to specific metrics or tracing tools. If we ever choose to change them, we might need to rewrite all the instrumentation code. That's much more costly than simply changing the tool. And that is where open telemetry comes in, swoops in. So let me show you first very quickly how that works. And then I'm going to talk more about what open telemetry is. Actually, let me start by talking about what open telemetry is, and then we're going to jump into a demo, a short one. So what is open telemetry? Well, open telemetry provides a what, how to say it, a standard for instrumentation that is independent of the tools where logs and metrics and traces are collected. And here comes the important part. It became so widely adopted that almost any logging and tracing and metric storage supports it. Splunk, Dynatrace, New Relic, Datadog, Honeycomb, Jagger are only a few out of many, and I repeat, many tools that support open telemetry natively. And on top of that, we have those that do not support it natively, but still support it somehow. So let's take a very, very brief, quick look 
at one of my applications and see how I injected OpenTelemetry over there and what does OpenTelemetry produce. I will be using Go, but don't be scared because I'm not teaching Go today. The same logic or similar logic would apply to any programming language. So here's my uh, main file, main uh, file of the application, main function of the application. And in it, when I'm initializing the application itself, I have, I'm invoking the function called init tracer. That's where I'm initializing tracer itself. I'm showing you traces right now, not metrics, but the logic is still very, very similar. And initialization is mostly concerned with the output. Where do I want to send, in this case, traces? And on top of that, I am using Jin, which is Go library that access, that helps with uh, defining, writing web servers. And apart from being a library that does that, there is a complementary library called Otel Jin that allows me to instrument my code automatically at least the part of the code that is using uh, Jin, the web server. So instrumentation is semi-automatic. All I have to do is say, hey, instrument all the requests coming through Jin in this case and provide the metrics and traces automatically. Now you might be asking, hey, how do you know that there is a complementary library of the library you just uh, used uh, that will give you the open telemetry outputs where we can go to the registry of open telemetry, uh, pick our favorite language, in this case Go, and then we see all the libraries that exist that output open telemetry uh, formats or instrument existing libraries with open telemetry. And I could have just searched for Jin over there and I would find the library that I need. And then uh, everything related to that specific part of the application would, and it does emit, in this case, traces automatically. I do not need to write much myself. Actually, I do have to write a few additional things, but that will be the subject of the next video, not this one. And then I have another file called OpenTelemetry where I defined, you know, remember that function that initializes uh, OpenTelemetry itself? Well, I defined it over here where I have that function in traces that uh, can output stuff uh, into, in this case, into Yager or into File Tracer. I'm going to use File Tracer for now to make it simple. And then if you're interested, I'm going to create a video specific to tracing, maybe tracing with Yager. How does that sound? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, uh, I'm initializing file tracer today and that file tracer is doing nothing really special. It is just saying, hey, uh, all the traces uh, that are produced by functions in this application should be output to the file traces.json. So that's it. It's that easy. I mean, it gets a bit more complicated, but that's not the subject of today's video. So yeah, it's relatively easy or not depending on what you're trying to do. But again, I digress. That's a different subject. What matters right now is that I'm going to deploy the application that I have with the instrumentation that is instrumented. And then we're going to see what happens. And by the way, I'm deploying it with kubectl customize and then enable Helm and you know, standard stuff, kubectl, bit customized. Next, I will get the name of the pod, uh, pod name that uh, was just deployed. And then I'm going to exec into the container inside that pod with kubectl namespaces production exec, etc, 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 and output the traces JSON file. I want to see what are those traces that are out to magically output to a file right now. And here we go. Those are the traces. You can see that my application is already generated a bunch of something. Now, the problem with those traces is that, yes, you can read them as a human, but they are not meant to be read directly. We need some kind of a helper tool or something that will enable us to visualize those traces. Because if, we start, if I would start reading it as is, I would go insane probably in 15 minutes. So far, I am generating traces. And the question is, where should I store them? Should I keep them in a file or do something else with them? But 
I will keep you in suspense. That is coming in the next video. In the next video, we're going to explore tracing in more detail. What is important right now is that we are talking about open telemetry. And I have open telemetry. My application is outputting stuff, metrics, and traces in open telemetry format. And then any, almost any tool available in the market should be able to pick those uh, pieces of data and do something with it. So, I have my application instrumented with OpenTelemetry that is decoupled with the tools that are going to pick up the data produced by my application. So, practical implementation of tracing and later on metrics is coming up in the upcoming video. For now, what I want to do is talk whether you should instrument your application with OpenTelemetry. You probably already know the answer, but let's check it out. So, should you instrument your application with OpenTelemetry? And the answer, a very short answer is a massive, a huge yes with a small note. The support for OpenTelemetry might be in alpha stage for some languages and it might not even be available yet for others. As a rule of thumb, at least today, tracing tends to be most mature uh, part of open telemetry, followed by metrics and then logs. And you can see the status of those if you go to open telemetry io slash status. And over there, you can see that uh, for Go, for example, uh, which is behind some other languages, traces are considered stable, metrics alpha, and logs are not yet even implemented. So let me answer the question in a different way. You must instrument your code if you want to gain insights into its behavior. Moreover, you must instrument your code using OpenTelemetry. Any other way of instrumentation is asking for trouble. You will be locked in and not in a good way, right? You will not be able to change your mind later without a considerable investment and a lot, and I repeat, a lot of pain. So, you've been warned. I did it. I warned you. Do not instrument your code with anything but open telemetry. Even if, for example, the type of instrumentation is not yet available for your language, start with the type that is available. So if logging is not uh, possible today for your programming language, then start with traces, then move to metrics. And then by the time you reach whatever is not available, like logs, it will probably be available by that time because OpenTelemetry project is moving very, very, very fast. 